What do you get when you mix a talented director who's also a fan with a production company and a network that's pretty much willing to let her do whatever she wants? You get the new Slumber Party Massacre. This is a reimagining of the 1982 film and it will be premiering on the Sci-Fi Channel on Saturday, October 16th. It is gore-tastic, really fun, does a bit of flipping the script, and I was able to speak with director, executive producer, Danishka Esther Hazy about these changes and more. Yes, I, you know, I am a, a fan of 80s horror and I am a fan of slasher movies. Um, you know, they are definitely the kind of uh, movie I would watch at sleepovers with my friends uh, as a teen girl. Um, I think I watched the Slumber Party franchise a little later. You know, I think it was after I was an adult horror fan uh, that it was suddenly was on my radar and, you know, and, and I'd heard about this slasher franchise written and directed by women which you know got me very excited and I, I checked them out right away um but i think as an adult i was a little torn about my feelings of uh <laughs> the slumber party massacre trilogy i had really really high hopes and some of them were met um and uh, in other ways i was very disappointed so um when i was first meeting with sci-fi and uh you know they pitched me this idea of working with shout factory to do a remake I was incredibly excited because I thought, oh, this is this is my opportunity to to kind of make the movie that I always wanted. And you know, from a fan point of view, I can take all the things I love about that that series of films, and then I can put all the stuff I wish had been in the original films. <laughs> and you know, it's good to like sort of you know make it uh, a gift for the next generation of horror fans. Were there any particular challenges making a horror? movie for sci-fi because you know you have to deal with ratings of what's allowed and how did you overcome those challenges yeah you know every every time you do a movie it's it's different um this was my second horror movie for sci-fi because i made banana splits so i'd been through the, the process of making a horror film for sci-fi and they've always been incredibly supportive you know banana splits was incredibly gory um it was what i wanted and uh they never had any complaints from the network about that they really liked the film so when i was you know pitching my vision for for this film you know i said i want a lot of practical effects and i want a lot of blood and i i want a lot of gore and, and everybody felt the same way about that i had complete support from the network which was wonderful um we did have to change a few things you know the the festival version and the, and the broadcast version um have some coarse language that's been removed um you know it's prime time so you know you you make those adjustments, um, you know, but it will also come out on Blu-ray and in, in all of its, you know, naked glory. So, you know, you get to have the best of both worlds. <laughs> Well, I think the the thing that was really stuck in my mind is I really wanted to recreate Diane's death in the garage um, because the shots of of Diane's death in the garage where she um, slides down the wall between Russ's legs as he's about to impale her with the drill became you know the image, the inspiration for the poster um, and it became very iconic. So I knew I wanted to, you know, tip my hat to that scene and play with a, a similar kind of framing um in one of the very early kills so that was something that i knew from the very start and the scene that i i made sure i didn't touch because i love it so much would probably be the death of neil while valerie is watching the old horror movie in her living room because that to me is like one of my favorite sequences in classic horror the the intercut between her watching this you know scream fest and, and neil being murdered outside it's so beautifully put together and you can really tell that Amy Holden Jones was an editor before she became a director because the pacing and cutting in that sequence is so good. So I knew I wasn't even gonna touch that one. <laughs> I was like, that cannot be improved. I will not mangle that beautiful sequence. I will just continue to enjoy it as a fan. You know, it's one of those things now you're a young woman and you're, you're watching a famous feminist horror series that you've heard so much about and it's, you know, it's just all boobs all the time. A lot of boobs, like so many boobs. <laughs> and you think it's over and then there's more boobs and you're like, what? You know, so, you know, it, it makes you feel a bit erased as, a, as an audience member <laughs> because I'm not against nudity and sex in nudity in films, but I feel there has to be a balance and there has to be a dialogue with your whole audience. Um, and I guess, you know, growing up in, in horror movies and, and genre movies, 
uh, and science fiction movies. You know, I felt this too as a young woman, as a girl. I often felt invisible. I often felt like there was no story that was speaking to me or characters that represented me. And I just really wanted the the vision in these movies to be less, um, you know, less limited. <laughs> Um, there's a, you know, a mono vision of, of who they thought their fans were, you know, their fans are 15 year old white boys and everybody else, we're all still watching it but about us at all. So, you know, I, I think we're living in a horror renaissance right now, which I, I, I hope I'm part of, you know, I see so many amazing filmmakers down making wonderful horror movies that are scary and heartbreaking and hilarious and from all different kinds of communities with all kinds of different lead characters. And I feel that we're we're all just benefiting from the new diversity that we're seeing in, in horror movies. So with this Slumber Party Massacre, there's quite a bit of flipping the script, making fun of the genre, and calling out the genre in the previous films. But still at the same time, it's an absolute homage as well. So can you tell me about that amalgamation and that process to have a balance of all of those different kind of aspects? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I guess I come at these, to these films as a fan, and, and I think fans understand these mixed feelings we have towards, you know, the films that we love. We can, we can enjoy watching them again and again, and yet still recognize their flaws um, and wish that they were better. So, you know, I, I love the original trilogy, and, and I have huge respect for the women writers and directors who made them, and I don't want to dismiss what they achieved, you know, the the barriers they faced becoming women horror directors in the 80s, you know, that's no small feat. It's it's huge. I wouldn't be here today if women hadn't made that series because they opened mm -hmm. so many doors. So I absolutely recognize that. But I want to, you know, continue the conversation. And I like to think, well, you know, Amy Holden Jones had a lot of restrictions on what she was allowed to shoot and what she was told she absolutely had to shoot. She you know, shouldn't have, you know, creative control, shouldn't have final cut. Um, so to have like the support of Sci-Fi and Shout to say, you know, go and and make your vision that they said to Suzanne and I, Suzanne and Kylie, the, the screenwriter, they said, yeah, you know, we know the story you want to tell and we're behind. Um, and they let us really just go have fun and, and say what we wanted to say. So I felt it, it's, it kind of came full circle. You know, the, the limitations that the original directors and writers had faced, you know, those we didn't face those same barriers. So that's progress. Well, this was my third time shooting in South Africa, so I do know uh, some of the actors there. So Alex McGregor, who plays Brini, um, I asked for right away um, when we knew where we were going to end up shooting because I'd worked with her on a show called A Vagrant Queen. Um, I was a really big fan of Alex's, so I was really happy that she was available. And someone else I asked for was um, Jennifer Stein, who plays Kay who she was also in Vagrant Queen, but most people probably wouldn't recognize her because she was a blue alien <laughs> with a pointed head. <laughs> it looks nothing like her real self, but she's just a phenomenal actor and has such great comic timing as well. And I've been wanting to reunite with her for a while. So, um, you know, I was able to, to get those two women, um, you know, attached right away. And then after that, you know, we needed um, a fresh young cast. So we, we, we did a lot of open uh, casting calls. We looked at actors uh, in Cape Town and Stellenbosch and Durban and, and Johannesburg. Um, you know, we brought actors from all over the place. Um, and I was just really happy with the amount of talent there we had to choose from. And also the passion of, of people who work in film and television in South Africa is just amazing. The actors and the crew really love what they do they they really want to be there they they bring so much joy to set um that you know even though it's a, a violent movie with lots of death and most of the characters die but we had a lot of fun <laughs> so it was um it was really one of my favorite set experiences i think it was really phallic in the first one I mean, like, yeah you know they they invented the whole um, castration scene by the pool, which is a phallic moment, which, you know, we, we do a callback to, but that was part of the, the big end of, of the original film. Um, and then there's, you know, all the various poses with the, the drill between Russ's legs. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we played with it even more. But some of the th things that we lifted are, are inspired from the original film. Like there was this motion that Michael uh, Valela did when he held the drill where he kind of rotated the handle and rubbed up and down the, the drill. And I, I mentioned that to Rob, Rob Van Vuyen, who plays um, 
our restaurant. I said, you've got to do that thing that Michael did where he's like rubbing up and down on his drill. And then we did one scene where he just did it so much. I was like, okay, no, too much, too much. <laughs> We have to see where we can take this and make it really funny, but it, it you know, it's, it's a balance. <laughs> well, a huge thank you to Danishka Esther Hazy. Be sure to check out the new Slumber Party Massacre starting Saturday, October 16th on the Sci-Fi Channel. I'm Carrie Lane with Fanversation. Give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to click that subscribe button and you can see more of our videos here on this channel. And you can find me everywhere online at Carrie D. Lane. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.